Well, our final session before lunch today looks at another of the biggest causes of cargo crime in the EMEA region, the severe lack of secure truck parking. Whilst I introduce our panel, I'd like to ask them to come up on stage as I introduce you. So to give us their thoughts and to share their experiences and expertise, joining us this session are Tom Barton, Director at Truck Parking Rotterdam, Martin Foss, Senior Manager Logistics and Security, Samsung Electronics. Can you see where you're sitting, gentlemen? Let me, there you go. Um, Dr. Jan Philip Veers, Head of Bosch Secure Truck Parking, Nick Long, European Network Manager at Snap Account, and Marcus Prince, Senior Manager of Standards and Training at Tapa Amir. Welcome, gentlemen, to, to you all. Thank you for joining us on this panel. So, secure parking has been a hot topic of conversation in recent years, and whenever the subject of cargo crime raises its head, but actions speak louder than words. All of our panelists are leading the way in helping to build and promote the need for more secure parking locations, but there's a long journey ahead. Tapa Amir's own parking security requirements standard, PSR, and secure parking program is progressing, but needs to accelerate considerably. Overall, the association believes there's demand for over 400,000 parking places at 2,000 locations across EMEA. So let's talk about the progress, challenges, and frustrations, and what could easily be one of the best solutions to substantially cut cargo crime. Gentlemen, we have a, a lot to pack in. I know this is an, a huge topic that we could discuss for a long time, but uh, if I could ask you all to keep your answers relatively succinct so we can get to as many questions as possible, that would be fantastic. And once again, do wave your hand uh, or stand up if you'd like um, to ask a question, and one of the Tapa Amir team will bring a microphone across to you. Marcus, perhaps I could start with you, though. Could you please briefly bring us up to date uh, with the status of the PSR program and also explain where you are in relation to Tapa Amir's call to align PSR with the European Commission's new safe and secure parking areas standard. Yeah, that's a good, that's, 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 that's a good point, that's a good topic. We'll just turn the mics on, there we go. Oh. Try again. Here we are. <coughs> Let me give you a handheld one whilst we sort that out. There you go, you can try that. Come and stand up here, Marcus, to answer that question whilst we get it sorted out. <laughs> I think now it's better. Okay. Yeah, to give you some updates about the PSR, we have initiated, especially this year, that we're going for a revision of PSR. That's our major goal. As you know, that PSR is one of our EMEA-driven standards, so we can take care of that. We can update it whenever we want. And this year, we decided to go for an update. And we want to bring it closer to the European Commission SSTPA program. So we have been in contact with the European Commission to become, as well, um, a training center for the SSTPA. Of course, especially last year, we have, yeah, we have done a lot of work to come closer to the PPOs, to the parking place operators. Uh, it was a bit frustrating last year. We have contacted nearly 1,000 of our unclassified sites and contacts, and we, we, we got from you as well, from our members, parking places, we reached out. But um, yeah, the problem we had last year, less 10% respond on our questions to become partner or to become a certified site. But we continue on that. And together with the European Commission and the SSTPA program, we see also a benefit for the parking place operators to get some fundings um, that was also the reason to discuss and initiate that the PSR program will be uh, get updated um, more detailed. We will not increase the security level due to the fact the level is already uh, really sufficient, but we want to connect the dots between the SSTPA and the European, um, our, our own program. That's our major goal. Marcus, thank you. Now, before I put any more questions to the panel, um, Ton has a couple of photographs which he would like to show us, which you'll be able to see up on the screens.
So I'm going to ask all of you very quickly before we ask any of the other questions, just to explain you know, who you are and why you're here and why you think this is such an important topic. And Ton, I'll start with you and you can reference the photographs there as well if you want. Are, the, are we all right with the microphones now? Yeah, they should be okay. This one should be okay. No, 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 your, your one there should be. Okay. This one? Okay. Yeah, okay. Turn that away. Um, okay, now the, the reason why I show this picture is because I wanted to frame the discussion on secure truck parkings. Um, when we talk within this room about secure truck parkings, we talk about uh, equipment and cargo. If I talk about a secure truck parking, it's supplying, let's say, fresh water, clean showers to the ladies and guys that are living on the truck parking and I take rid of their garbage when they leave. Um, and if you talk about, let's say, uh, uh, politicians or policy makers, if you like, um, they talk about secure truck parkings as a means to get rid of the nuisance of illegally parked trucks um, and about social conditions of truck drivers. So this whole thing is, is far more complex than just talking about fences, uh, gates, and, and the likes. Um, and that's probably uh, something we, we should bear in mind. Um, so that's why I wanted to show these pictures. Just briefly, uh, on our organization, we operate 10 secure truck parkings in the Netherlands uh, out of one location. Um, and we've been doing so for over 10 years. Uh, probably active in this industry now for 15 years. Jan Philipp. Yes, my name is Jan Philipp Beers from uh, Bosch. I'm responsible for Bosch Secure Truck Parking. Um, hopefully most of you know it. It's a booking a platform similar to um, booking.com, but obviously not for hotels, but for truck parking lots. Um, yes, and we work closely together with companies like uh, Samsung. Um, helping them to organize um, their parkings and uh, basically to assure that when a truck arrives that there's actually a parking lot available and uh, hopefully on a secure parking lot like the ones that you're operating. Martin, let me, follow, let me let you follow up on that. Yeah, my name is uh, Maarten Vos and I'm uh, responsible for security within uh, Samsung in, uh, in Europe together with my colleagues here in the, in the audience. And yeah, on daily level, we are struggling with uh, the, the criminals. And so we are looking and defining all kinds of opportunities to improve the situation. And that's why we're also collaborating with, uh, with Bosch and I think successful. And uh, yeah, these are one of the, the projects which we have identified as, um, yes, as really important to improve the security situation and decrease the, the number of theft cases uh, within Samsung. Nick. Hi, uh, good morning everybody. Nick Long from SNAP, European Network Manager. Uh, I primarily look after uh, the locations that we use for, for parking. Uh, but we've since our last TAPR event, we've actually formed part of the roadside services where we connect uh, fueling, being EV or, or normal traditional fuels, uh, through to the network of locations, uh, it was a thousand across Europe, uh, parking and retail as well. So for us to iterate what, what Tom was saying before, it's it's not just about the security, but the genuine welfare um, of the drivers. Uh, and since the last conference, we've actually uh, started running our first truck stop in the UK. Um, so we now have a different hat on again today to really talk about uh, secure truck parking ourselves. So that's why we're here today. Thank you all. Tom, let me come to you first then. Is there a strong enough business case for secure truck parkings? Barely. Um, no, the, I mean, if you look at the investments and the willingness to pay for secure parking, um, it, it's a tough case, to be quite frank. Um, so most of the locations we developed have been a public-private cooperation, both on the financing and or subsidy side. Um, but having said that, it is a tremendous success. The 10 locations I talk about, we now look at an occupation rate of something like 69%, so we're basically full. Um, but it, it's complicated at first, but it's doable. And, and to stay with you just for one more question, why is it taking so long to develop new truck parking sites? Well, two reasons, uh, zoning um, and, and permitting, uh, and secondary, uh, I would say financing. Nick, let me, let me come across to you now. What would you say are the main challenges to operating a secure parking location from your experience? 
Uh, well, from our experience, uh, it's not so much the technology, it's the day-to-day -day operations. I think you can have any kit you want, you know, any, we do an awful lot of installations for security elements, but it's the actual want and desire for the people on the ground to want to do a good job to actually secure the cargo um, and to also offer the driver a home-from-home -home experience. So from, from our, our knowledge thus far, um, we're also in the process of building new truck stops for the UK and uh, into France as well. We want to try and use the PSR standards, not just for that, but for, for the element for the driver, to really complete that journey and use it as that framework. So there are challenges, um, but I would say that's probably the, the main one at the moment. And, and for those customers of yours, why is Tapper's PSR so important, uh, particularly in high-risk areas for cargo crime? So we look after around 160,000 trucks or, or customers uh, who use us for, for locations for parking for their secure cargo. Um, we also have within our own group 900 drivers. So for us, it's also about the, the retention of the driver. So if they have a bad experience, they have maybe have a theft from their own vehicle or something like that, you know, then we lose our own drivers from our own group. So because there is such a shortage of drivers, genuinely, um, we have to really think about that. So um, that's a real key point for us. And uh, I'll come to... Yes, Martin, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, yeah, the previous years we tried to, uh, to develop all kinds of secured parkings by ourselves. And uh, actually what Tom is referring to, that uh, owners are not willing to, to invest that much. Uh, so we have all kinds of strategic positions. We know in Europe where we need uh, secured parkings at, at Samsung. But then we tried to connect with the owners and they were not willing to invest because all the parkings were already occupied. So why improve a parking why it's, when it's already occupied for 100% and they have an annual turnover and they need to invest a certain amount of money and then they, they do not know if it will improve this, their, their turnover, yes or no. And for that reason, now the collaboration with Bosch is so significantly uh, improved for us because they will do that discussion they will discuss the turnover, but uh, yeah, Philip can, I think, <laughs> explain it a little, a little bit better. But now we're making improvements due to the collaboration with, with Bosch to that. And we didn't succeed as Samsung as much as we liked. We did sometimes, but it took so much effort to organize. And, and I'd quite like to ask uh, Jan Philip as well about what, uh, a bit more about the added value of that. But just before I do, Nick, let me just ask you one more question. What's the effect of the PSL standard for sites in the SNAP network? Um, excellent. So if you look at some of the, uh, some of the crime data from the TIS uh, database and look where, where the, you know, the thefts or, you know, are happening, and you then overview what we've put in so far, um, it's working. It's having a positive effect. I think we are being asked daily where the tapper sites are. So, uh, you know, the, there is a real conversation on a data basis with our drivers for those, and then we direct them to those locations first. And then after that, you know, they say, okay, well, where's next? Where's next? So, yeah, that's what we do. That's good to hear. Uh, Jan Philip Martin's just started discussing as well your cooperation. So, with that cooperation, what's the added value for Bosch of doing this? Well, of course, first of all, we're really proud to work together with uh, Samsung and uh, definitely it means uh, a lot of uh, volume yeah, for our booking uh, platform. So the LSPs uh, driving for uh, Samsung, they are committed to use our booking uh, platform and I think it's really a win-win situation for every party uh, involved. I mean, the obvious for, for Bosch, yeah, so we are happy if we have uh, more traffic. Um, for the LSP, yeah, because they have the guarantee when the truck arrives, there is a, a secure, secure parking uh, area. And uh, for Samsung, obviously, um, well, to have this developed network of safe havens across uh, Europe. Martin, did you want to add anything why, further to what you said earlier? Why are you working with Bosch? No, that, that, that was correct, what he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> and there, there, there's, there's one thing more. Um, what I mentioned already, that we have all kinds of strategic positions within Europe. And uh, up to, I think, one of two years ago, we paid for us by themselves. So we initiated security uh, guards there. So sometimes we needed to pay 100,000 euros annually to secure a certain area. And then we sent the, those, uh, all our trucks to that location. And now it's 
paid by, pay by use. So it's, it's all going via the Bosch website. Uh, they book uh, a specific spot. So they have a guaranteed parking location for a specific truck. So that's the, the first added value, not when they're entering the parking. Uh, they would like to enter the parking. There's no space anymore, so they need to park outside. And then it's a risk because the criminals are aware of the secured parking locations and also the trucks which are standing outside of the parking. And the second part is that financially it's an improvement for us because the, the carriers need to pay by themselves. So are there any additional costs involved for Samsung then? No, no specific cost, but um, we, we have some kind of discussions um, that we need to guarantee a certain number of, uh, of uh, parking actions. So for example, we are now busy with opening uh, near the German, uh, the Czech German border, I don't know. Yeah, yeah and, uh, but then we need to guarantee, I think, 1,000 parkings annually. And when we are not able to manage that, we, ne we need to, uh, yeah, like a guarantee fee, because the, the parking owner needs to invest. So he wants to have in one year or one hour fee or two years, what it's dependent on the, every single uh, issue then we can decide, okay, how much guarantee do we give? And yeah, if 1,000 trucks annually, let's say 80 a month, when, we're not, uh, when we are able to make 60, we need to pay 20, uh, 20 more parking actions, some kind like that. I'll, I'll come to you, Marcus, and Ton in just a moment. One final question for the moment, uh, Jan Philip. What are the next steps for you in your cooperation with Samsung? Well, first of all, I think we really want to deepen uh, the cooperation and further extend uh, the network, so we are not uh, there yet. There's still lots of things to do. Um, and uh, what will be now in the focus is really um, the topic of integration. So uh, right now we are a booking platform more or less standalone, but I think the next step is really to integrate it into the transport management uh, systems uh, especially into the TMS system from uh, Samsung SDIS, uh, Cello. And uh, I think there's so much more value if you actually combine um, parking traffic data with GPS data. You can have immediate uh, alerts. So right now we are, we are focusing on reports and of course is always looking backwards. Yeah, But if you really um, integrate the parking uh, data with the logistics uh, data, you can immediately uh, uh, react to it if a LSP is missing uh, the right uh, spot to park. So I think um, in terms of integration, uh, data analytics, there is uh, a whole lot uh, of value to create. And this is a topic that we plan to focus on next, yes. Um, and Ton, I'll come to you, but just a quick reminder, if you do want to ask a question, do put your hand up, but you might want to come to the front because it's difficult for me to see if there are arms, but um, uh, Ton, so what would you say then differentiates the TAPA EMEA program from the EU program? Well, currently we, 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 we're closing the gap, uh, but clearly to me, uh, there is a very strong focus on security, period. Whereas if you look at the, the EU, they look at existing sites to be developed in, 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 in other areas. Uh, with an ever-increasing wish list, uh, ranging from, uh, let's say, the amount of, of toilets to charging trucks and to have electrical plugs and everything else. So there is, there is an increasingly, um, uh, well, an increasing wish list uh, on the EU side, whereas we tend to focus just on, on the bare essence of security that has to be, let's say, uh, being paid for by the truck parking operator and has to make sense. So we have a, a, a significant different view on the whole subject. So uh, does TAPA Ramir need PSR, or could the association simply just endorse the EU program then? Well, that's, that's a tough question. In my mind, we should have a separate program because, as I said previously, there is a very strong, uh, let's say, look at security rather than anything else. Whereas in the EU, uh, or for any, uh, let's say, political body uh, with that respect, they will look at something much more broader in order to be created than just secure sites. Marcus, uh, what's TAPA Amir doing to interest more parking place operators in the PSR standard? 
Let's give it an ah, here we are. Let's give it another try. Yeah, at least what we have now initiated as well, we have uh, created the PSR teaser. Um, we will reach out again to all the um, parking place operators. Further, we will contact them again. We will convince the industry about the importance of secure parking. As you know, 60% of all uh, incidents are cured or non-secure parking. And uh, that's our major goal also, especially for this year with the revision of the PSA to convince and reach out again to the industry and to the parking place operators. And together with also all involved parties here and the PSA group and the booking platform operators, we have this goal in front of us. Nick, let me bring you back in. I think you probably wanted to comment there anyway, but um, what are you doing to grow the number of sites offering secure parking and adopting PSR rule? Sure. So we're in a really fortunate position. So uh, we will have always worked very closely with TAPA. Um, so we're authorised auditors to be able to support sites in uh, registering for PPO status straight away and also the self-certification of PSR level three. Uh, the locations the UK and France have come from SNAP, so we do that ourselves for free. Um, and we do it really as an exercise to educate the locations on what they could do uh, for minimal costs. So for us, about having clear conversations with the sites, um, you know, the low investment required, if the investment is required, well, SNAP can help with that. You know, we were, were fully on board of investing into locations. Uh, we've got a new site opening in Dunkirk, where we invested 150,000 euros in kit, but that only goes halfway until we actually educate with the location to, to, to manage it and do it in, in the right way. So for us, it's for, for this year, it's as clear, concise conversations. Uh, it's, it's having those face-to-faces and improving the standards one by one by each site, which takes time. It's, it's not an overnight fix. And what's it like to operate a secure parking location within your group of SNAP, CERTUS, DCC? It's pretty cool. It's, um, it's, it's been a long time coming. Um, so because we have worked and do work with so many truck stops across Europe, to then actually have the ability to get involved right at the, the floor level, um, the progress, as me and Tom were speaking about earlier, about the EV charging is a real key point of if electric trucks are coming, well, how are you going to manage that? Where are you going to put it? Who's doing the infrastructure? Where's the electricity coming from? Is it renewables? Is it from the grid? So all of these challenges, all of these positive elements, but the best thing is being able to speak to our customers and have a direct impact now uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, so way more than we were before. Um, and what are SNAP's ambitions to grow its own parking network? Um, so we have locations uh, opening across France. So working with our sister company, Citus France Energy. Uh, so we've got 10 locations uh, in, in, let's say, in build at the moment. Uh, we've got others in the UK, and we're really keen to do uh, joint investments with sites as well. So um, because we are technically owned by DCC PLC, um, they have the want and the desire through our, our group and our, our roadside services to provide the whole package now. Um, we can do it, we have done it, and we will do it. Jan Philip, I'll, I'll come back to you and, and then to Martin. Um, you are also working with, uh, together with Amazon Transport Services and the startup FreightSafe. Can you um, elaborate a little on that? Um, yes, this is, this is actually um, a very cool topic, I would say. So also here we are very proud to uh, work together with Amazon Web Services. The idea is uh, basically to build up a logistics platform. And I mentioned uh, earlier that, uh, well, it's, it's all about the data, yeah, where that's where the value is. And um, we see that there's actually a huge, um, it's a huge topic to connect um, transport management systems to services. And, um, and, and quite honestly, it's quite often, it's the, the value that you uh, uh, get does not really justify the cost. So the idea is to build this logistics platform where you connect to directly with your transport management system and then you do not just have access to one service like Bosch Secure Truck uh, Parking, but actually to a wide array of, I think for the beginning, Janis, you're the one responsible for that topic, uh, 25 uh, services in Bosch Secure Truck Parking just being uh, one of it. So we really hope that this will um, make the supply chain and the whole orchestration of uh, transport uh, more efficient and, and also economically uh, viable to go that direction. 
And, and um, to, just to continue with you, some of the um, delegates might also have seen media reports about logistics cooperation with, um, between Amazon Web Services and Bosch. Can you tell us any more about that? Um, you mean the, the second uh, project? Yeah, that's actually something that we developed with uh, Amazon in Barcelona, that um, together with uh, our uh, corporation uh, partner, uh, Freightsafe, startup from uh, UK. So they have a very innovative swap and drop uh, uh, concept. So the idea is uh, basically, so building three, as we call it, cargo hubs close to this Amazon warehouse in uh, Barcelona. And, you know, just in time does not always work. So in the future, the trucks do not need to wait anymore to unload, uh, but instead they can just drop off the trailer in these cargo bays. And of course, the, the cargo bays can be booked via our platform. And this is not there yet, but this is a future uh, topic. Um, so it is planned in the future Then actually an autonomously driving truck is picking up the trailer from the Fright Safe cargo bay and bring that to the uh, warehouse. So also here, I think that's really fascinating when, when you first think about parking, you say, well, cannot be simpler than that, but actually there's a lot of um, action into the topic. And also Nick mentioned that uh, charging, so also charging and parking, of course, that will also come together. So we are really very fascinated by this uh, topic and all the opportunities that are ahead of the, us there. And, and Martin, with regards to your collaboration, um, what kind of future do you see for that collaboration? Um, yeah, extension. <clears throat> what I mentioned, we need uh, secured parkings all over Europe, and we just started. Um, so uh, much more extension, but the, the, then we face also difficulties, because what I earlier mentioned, that we also need um, to guarantee a certain amount of uh, parking actions, and that will become more difficult when uh, there will be extensive uh, parking locations, because yeah, you cannot, uh, yeah, you need to divide the number of parkings throughout uh, more uh, parking locations. So that will be challenging, but I think we will manage. And indeed, what you know, Philip was referring to is to to connect on the, on databases, so uh, to integrate the system into Cello, that's our uh, transport management system. I think that will be the next step. Um, Marcus, I'll come back to, to you now. How difficult um, is it to identify at parking sites, to identify the decision makers there? Yeah, that's indeed um, not that easy. We got a lot of information about parking place operators. We try to reach out to them. Uh, sometimes the contact details um, exchanged. Um, so we are working together with our members and also if you like to support us on that, if you can reach out to the PPOs and to convince them uh, how important the partner and relationship with us is, it's a benefit for all of us and as soon as we have the details, so we have already unclassified parking um, places, but we cannot, at least we cannot share them uh, due to the fact we never know uh, what's about the security standards on site. And for us, it's important to get classified information to get them and attract them as partners. Uh, partners is the first step, better as a certification. But um, what we need and what you need are the secured or the best places you can um, do the breaks. And that's important for us and support us whenever you can. And, and is there anything else on top of that that members can do to help or would that be the key? spread the message, uh, spread the message and um, use also that secured parking places um, which are available. Um, Ton is racing already. Ton is one of our supporters and the other guys here as well. Uh, they normally also fully booked but they trust on the procedure, they trust on the security and um, that's what we appreciate and that's our task to convince the parking place operators. Tom, do you want to follow up, up on that? Can we use the Tapa Amir organization to grow the number of secure truck parking? Well, the, the only way to make them grow in the very near future is, like Marcus said, reaching out to existing sites and upgrade them. Uh, we can't wait, we cannot afford ourselves to wait for, for new builds or very big plans, because on average they will take probably five to seven years, whereas today we have a shortage of 2,000 parking lots. 
Um, so the key indeed is to reach out to those guys that currently have a parking uh, position and, and make them invest in making it more secure. And, and only a dialogue between you as, as the ultimate cost customer of that PPO uh, will, will make that possible. But that's it. I can see a lot of nodding on the panel. Did anybody want to add anything to that? Yes. Um, we are now discussing the, to extend the number of secured parkings, but we also need to persuade the, the carriers. Because uh, when you're not... Um, uh, you need to be very strict on them. When you're not doing that, they... Uh, just uh, just a driver can make a decision not to park secured because he can save uh, 20 or 30 euros which he can spend uh, personally or something so uh, d d this can be avoided when the, the, the truck parkings are going through a website but we still see also secured parkings where you have to pay cash um, uh, and that that can be a problem so we need significant improvements of the secured parkings and digitizing of the payments but otherwise uh, and uh, at the other end also carers need to be persuaded to to use it and mm. um, we've got a question from the floor but before we go to that nick did you want to say something to that as yeah, well yeah i think it is um the, the one thing that we found with with ppos is it's the way in which you uh, the meaning that you talk to them as well so you know you have operators from 18 to 20 year olds you know they've taken over and you also have the ones that are 95 plus you want to be contacted by a fax machine, which obviously don't exist anymore. So, you know, it, it really is it's the way in which you, you interact with them and, um, you know, the conversations that we have on site, it's a little bit of hand-holding, you know, and I think it really takes, you know, the people in the room here to, you know, ask your drivers to ask the site, hey, you know, are you TAPA registered? So um, it, we really find it comes down to driver level, not just yourselves in the room. Um, but, you know, we find that, you know, more than 60% of our customer base, where they choose to park is still down to the driver, which is a huge amount. So actually, you know, the 4 percent here, great, but we need the drivers to ask for it at the same time. Um, who, the question at the um, back. That wasn't me. Hi, can you introduce yourself? And um, good afternoon. My name is Cameron from Impargo. Um, I've got a question to mostly to the Jan um, because he said about the about the next step uh, of integration, the parking uh, applications or whatever to the tra transport management systems. Uh, my question is more about how. I mean, there are some state-owned uh, parking spaces, and how are you going to manage that availability? Uh, for um, it's more operational question uh, because we're also looking for some solution for that and but to integrate with the TMS there is no answer for that for now and Philip so if I understand you right with the with, you're talking about public parking locations state-owned ones that exactly were, that are not uh, a gated right so exactly without they, any access control yeah, so, so these ones are actually out of scope for us um, uh, because, well, if you cannot control the access, then definitely you cannot give a promise into the future that when the truck arrives, there will be a, a space uh, uh, available. So the public ones, uh, ungated uh, ones, are out of scope, so to speak. Um, I think they are just interesting formats for the volume uh, segment. Um, Nevertheless, there are some activities, uh, so usually they use sensors, videos, and, and, and these kind of things to, um, to uh, uh, at least have the uh, real-time availability data, but, well, without, you cannot look in the future. You can just say, well, that, that is a situation right now. And this is a topic that uh, is driven by the state and, and not by private uh, companies. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cameron. We have a, another question. Would you like to stand up and introduce yourself and if there's a specific person you'd like to direct it to? Yep, sure. So, um, Jan Slimschen from Bosch. And um, I had the pleasure to work in the past also with uh, the likes like Martin, but I never asked a certain question that uh, just came to my mind. So, you, yes, Martin, exactly you. So, um, we, we talk a lot about truck parking here. We talk about pre-booking, be it with Snap, be it with Bosch, whoever. And um, one thing that I encountered a lot and still am encountering though is and that there's a lot of concerns about actively managing your parking as somebody like um, Samsung Electronics. So as a shipper who owns the goods, because it's, it's a lot of effort, it's costly, at least that's what I hear a lot. So I would really like to understand from you, Martin, what, would, what do you say to other companies that maybe are also here in this room 
um, about this. That, why does it pay off, or is Samsung just happy to give away money? And do you have too many people? I'm, I'm just wondering. So. Is this a commercial question? No, no, no I'm really, because I'm really wondering. This is because I think it's fascinating because you're doing it very successfully. But I still, but others are not, and I'm wondering what is the, um, how, how did you come to this decision to actually manage it actively, be it with a booking platform or not, that's not even the point, but really, you know, this close level of control. Yeah, it's, it's already, if I understand your question correctly, it's already started uh, multiple years ago, eh, where, where you can make a decision as a, a Samsung. Um, you just um, uh, transport your goods and when there's something stolen, it's a security or liability issue and you can discuss that or you are more focused on, on security itself. And I think uh, we have made a decision, I think Rijn de Vries, uh, one of the colleagues, has started this, uh, this uh, significantly within Samsung that we need to focus on the secured parkings by ourselves. And we have seen that um, that we were successful. We have uh, security or theft incidents, but compared to, to other companies, to competitors, I think we are doing quite well. And we see sometimes uh, significant losses in the, the high value transports or warehouse issues. So that's the mobile telephones, because criminals are also very focused on that. But where we talking uh, in, in this stage about secured parkings is more for a TV business. And um, yeah, we have seen that there were uh, huge losses. And when we've seen in certain areas in Europe that we had losses, then we initiated secured parking locations, paid by ourselves. And then that's the way we started. And then eventually we tried to, to collaborate with the owner of a secured parking in that area. But what I already mentioned, that was kind of difficult to achieve. And since the co collaboration with Bosch, it's that, that's uh, more successful. So, was that your question, uh, Janus? Oh, really? <laughs> Thanks, Martin. And we have another question at the front. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Jonel Popa. And I have a question, actually, for all of us. It's not necessarily for the panel. And by the way, I really appreciate the discussion here. If we go back to the numbers and we see that more than 50% of the losses are happening in unsecured parking places, right? And we look at what we are doing to mitigate the risks and we are putting the focus on FSR, on TSR, and nothing to, to against about these standards, but how much are we doing about PSR? How, how, how much are we doing to mitigate that, those uh, risks related to 50% of the incidents, right? So we leave them aside, and we are focusing on things like 25%, 20%. What is the added value in putting all that focus in areas which are not bringing that much return on investment, right? No. Thank you. Um, Thank you, uh, who? Yeah, I would like to respond. It's always, from my perspective, a liability and insurance issue because we are not forcing our LSPs or our carriers to use the secured parking. So we try to, but um, yeah, we, we yeah, how you, can you say that? We try to push them, but it's not we not force them because initially it's the carrier responsibility to park secured. So we have to distinct this very carefully because when we are uh, obligating them to use only the secured parking locations when a, th a theft case happens, the carrier will say, no, I needed to park on that location because you requested that to me. So it will always be uh, their own choice where it, uh, they can choose wherever they want to park if it's secured. Mm -hmm. And we have preferred parking locations. Okay. That's how we uh, organize it. If I could just jump in there. Is Nick, that, uh, just yeah. sorry, I'll, I will let you come back to that. Yeah. Uh, there is another question behind, so perhaps you could just pass the microphone back to the gentleman in the check shirt. Nick. Yeah, um, it was just to, to go back to the point, so what, what is everybody doing about it? So 11, year, 11 years ago, we came up with a depot parking scheme. So everyone in this room will have some form of yard, some sort of space to be able to fill a couple of trucks. And it's not about investing huge infrastructure because you, you already have it, already do it. Um, through what the scheme that we do, which is you know, similar, I guess, to, to Bosch in that respect, we this year will have half a million extra parking spaces through our depot parking scheme. But it's getting people to use it. It's kind of like they're there. You can utilise them. All, some of them are PSR. So you know, within reason, you don't have to build any new locations because it's sat in this room. Um, you can all mitigate or offset costs from your own parking, your own washing. So. Have a think about it. You know, genuinely, it could be a really great option for you. And, and again, I'm, I'm around for the next you know, day. So come see me. It is a really interesting option. Um, and I think any of the solutions probably could work for you. Thank you, Nick. And, and thanks, Jan. Uh, yes, sir. 
Hi, my name is Vladimir, coming from Geodis. So I have two basic questions, uh, and I suppose any of the gentlemen can, can answer. Uh, the first question would be, uh, which uh, key elements uh, you, you see as uh, you know, really necessary for, to make a good, uh, perfectly, perfectly safe or secure parking lot? And the second question would be, uh, have you had any security incidents within your parking lots? Thank you. Ton. Yeah. Um, we, we had one incident over the last three years. So that to answer your, your second question. Um, then the question of what you should invest in in order to make it a perfectly secure parking place, I don't know. Um, that will be the honest answer. Um, but I do feel that it is critical that um, at least you, you have a clear visibility throughout the site of everything that's happening there. Mm -hmm. And you should have, let's say, a very good access control, yeah. both for people and, and trucks with appropriate yeah. uh, registration. Those should be the, the prime elements um, I would, uh, let's say, uh, advise you to, uh, to install. Yeah, I would I'd, I'd agree with the same thing. I think the biggest thing that we've noticed is that if you follow the PSR scheme when you're building a location and you kind of get it into your head, and maybe he can do the PSR training, um, th simple things like the one meter either side of the fence line, you know, it's not rocket science, but having that clear visibility of your site and then the ability to track it. So, you know, track a person, track an object, you know, it is really, really key, but then employing and investing in the right people to manage that site who want to make a difference is, is again really key. Martin, I know you wanted to add something as well. Yeah, it depends on uh, every single situation. Uh, for example, two years ago we had a, a big issue in Köln area and then uh, the, I think that this was our first project with Bosch. Uh, we initiated to, to open a secured parking in Frechen in Germany, that's nearby, so uh, that was really success, successful. No uh, um, uh, incidents occurred anymore, and that's a really high secured area, but we all, you have to also be practical. For example, uh, near in, um, in the, the north, uh, the south part of Madrid, we have also a secured parking. But the security is really not the same level as I mentioned before. And actually we had a theft incident there a few months ago. We thought we had, but eventually the truck which was robbed was exactly at the other side of the parking. So they know it's less secured uh, and the, the secured parking area was not, was not hit, but just next to it. So it's again the behavior of the, of the, the driver who initiated the, the, the theft case. But you can never compare each way you can set a certain level and from a customer perspective we always want to have the highest security level but in practice that's not possible yet well if, if i can yes add, please do maybe yeah, add to that sorry yeah. <laughs> two minutes <laughs> two minutes okay yeah. <laughs> so um from from our experience so it's it's not just let's say just the access control system or the heights of of the fence or the video system but it's really a lot about processes and on both ends processes on the parking area itself, so how is it operated, yeah? And also, of course, processes on the carrier side. So what is the reaction time? The uh, LSP is directed to a certain parking area, but actually the driver parks just next to it on the volume parking area where he gets a free sausage, yeah? So what is actually the reaction time uh, until uh, an alarm is triggered and you can move that uh, uh, truck to where it actually belongs? So processes, I think, next to hardware uh, topics are extremely important and sometimes overlooked yeah so uh, and you need to have that in control I, I know everyone will be keen to get to lunch but it is an interesting debate we just have one last question so we'll make it the last question maybe just one person to answer hello guys uh thank you for the word um i'm Attila Houdi from continental um and i'd like to ask the question it's it's a general question uh, what is TAPA doing to promote secure parking places in Eastern Europe? Because, uh, you know, the Eastern European countries are lacking of, of these parking places. Uh, for an example, I'm from Hungary, and if I'm correct, there is none of a secure parking place. Marcus? At least, at least what we are doing right now is that we're reaching out with our partners and booking platform operators to attract new partners, to attract new partners. That's also what I've mentioned, that we have now the new teaser, the one-pager. We will go via our um, AABs to also spread the message. 
and um, that's what we're doing also right now here. And in the next vigilance, we will give some more updates. We will then catch up these topics. We will promote the PSL program. And especially, we are working on a new training program to update that PSL training program to make it also more transparent and you give you more guidance how to get certified and to get a partner. Thank you, Marcus. Well, when uh, Jamie was talking to me before I was hosting this event, he said the one thing you must do is hit the brakes on time. I know that lunch is very important. We're just going to be two minutes over, so I hope you'll forgive us, because I think that was well worth going over for two minutes. Um, gentlemen, I'm sure you'll be around if anybody wants more questions to pose during lunch or, or this afternoon. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. You just stay there one minute. Before lunch...